recitations. Wonderful, mysterious, and perfect creatures of an other civilization. Due to the great differences in environments, as well as their long, independent evolution, cetacean brains have developed somewhat differently than humans. We don't yet have the ability to fully understand them. I have learned over three decades of studying the biology and the natural history of whales in general, but especially orcas, to look at them as persons, as a kind of people that have an identity and, and have a role and have a family and have a memory and have a story of their lives and, and that they know and, and have strong bonds of love and trust with their families if we would study the orcas and, and respect them as persons and as communities, as nations in their own right. I think we could learn a lot. Humanity has come to the realization that it is cruel, immoral, and inhumane to keep highly intelligent animals such as killer whales, beluga whales, and dolphins captive. Animal rights activists around the world have been fighting to end marine mammal captivity for decades. A huge first step has been made, with most countries prohibiting capturing cetaceans from the wild. To my knowledge, the only country that is capturing orcas right now is Russia. They've taken 10 now. Okay, they've captured 10 young orcas from the Sea of Okhotsk. This is um, a population of orcas about which researchers know almost nothing. And yet they're taking 10 in three years? There might only be 100 of those whales. They just took 10% of the population. If you're only concerned about conservation, it's not sustainable. If you care about animal welfare, it's not humane. Russia is trying to build up the industry that SeaWorld built up in the United States back in the 1970s and 1980s by capturing in Washington and in Iceland. And I think the Russian entrepreneurs, the capitalists in Russia, are seeing an opportunity to start an industry there and bring in lots of money. According to the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums, more than 700 million people visit their member facilities every year. Building an oceanarium is a highly profitable venture. In 2013, Russian billionaires Gold Nisanov and Zakharov Ilyev started to build Europe's largest oceanarium at the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow. Gold Nisanov stated that a killer whale and a beluga whale had already been captured off the coast of eastern Russia for this dolphinarium, and that a contract for the delivery of 17 dolphins from Japan had been signed. Russian captors had been hunting killer whales for at least 15 years, but it was only in 2012 that the first survived. How many killer whales died before then? This five-year-old female killer whale, later dubbed Narnia, was captured in the Sea of Okhotsk off the east coast of Russia by Sochinsky Delfinari in August 2012. The capture of this animal was conducted lawfully under a permit issued by Russian fish and wildlife authorities for, quote, educational and cultural purposes. It is not acceptable and it is not entertaining to go and see whales do tricks in captivity. The Russian Marine Mammal Council announced that killer whale capture quotas were illegal because they were based on the management of a single species, whereas there are at least two distinct ecotypes, fish-eating residents and mammal-eating transients. In the summer of 2013, three young orcas were caught off the east coast of Russia. One of the orcas was later named Nord, and they were placed in a sea pen with Narnia. In October 2013, the All-Russian Institute for Nature Protection issued a recommendation for approval of CITES permits for the export of two of the killer whales to China. Do the whole thing, to collect the animals, select them, uh, do the initial training, and then transport them to the facilities that they were going to. And how many killer whales? A total of eight. And yeah. where would this have taken place? In Russia and it was that the buyers were, were Chinese buyers. And it was mentioned that uh, two of the animals would be going to the Olympics, Sochi, you know. At the Sochi. Head. Yeah. Did Jeff Foster turn down an offer 
that would have allowed him to retire in comfort. I mean, it got to that point, and it, you know, literally, it was looking in the mirror, and when I just said, no, I, I can't do this. I can't, I'm not gonna, I, I, I can't get involved with the, any more captures, you know, of the of killer whales. Capture of any orcas anywhere, no matter how well it is done, will kill them. Maybe sooner, maybe later. And many have died already from the captures in Russia. In 2013, they killed over 30 belugas just trying to live capture them. They drowned them, accidentally. So if you care about the animals from a humane point of view, it's horrible, it's extremely traumatic, and a lot of them end up dead. So if you actually care about their welfare and you care about the CO Cox as an ecosystem, the whole thing is wrong. You cannot safely, humanely capture orcas and remove them from their vast ocean habitat and their large extended families and put them in a box and expect them to live or live long. They don't. In November 2013, on social networks, the news of a planned transport of orcas to the Olympic Games in Sochi spread rapidly. Animal advocates have repeatedly appealed to the Russian legislature and raised questions about the criminal capture, transport, and exploitation of marine mammals in Russia, as well as the country's lack of standards for animal welfare. They have pointed out that not a single Russian dolphinarium is suitable for large animals such as killer whales. And the activists also raised the possibility that the transport of the orcas to Sochi might provoke a negative reaction around the world and lead to a boycott of the Olympic Games in Sochi. The Sochi prosecutor's office conducted inspections of four dolphinariums in Sochi. A number of offenses were noted, but the killer whales were never found. On December 2nd, 2013, under tight security and in great secrecy, two killer whales were transported to Moscow into the tanks at the All-Russian Exhibition Center. In Russia, killer whales are still considered an aquatic biological resource and, as such, humane treatment is not considered and laws regarding capture are mostly ignored. In July 2014, two killer whales were captured off Russia's east coast and shipped to China. Illegal, because the 2014 Russian total allowable catch on orcas had not yet been approved. The captors provided documents to inspectors which claimed that killer whales captured in 2013 were kept all winter in the Gulf of Nicholas. However, the Gulf completely freezes in the winter, making the overwinter housing of orcas there impossible. This blatant lie explains why the Sochinsky Dolphinary claimed that six killer whales were caught in 2013 instead of the three actually captured in August of that year. On the fishing grounds in the Gulf of Sakhalin, border guards stumbled upon an orca in a makeshift pool without any capture permit. The fishermen reported that the orca was sick and they were going to cure and release her. In July 2014, it was reported that experts from the Russian State Ecological Authority were given an ultimatum. Either they approved whale capture or they would be replaced. In September 2014, three killer whales were captured under the approved 2014 quota. The Russian Natural Resources Service announced that in 2014, CITES issued three permits for the export of killer whales to China. The orc is captured under a permit for, quote, educational and cultural purposes were actually intended for sale in China. Also that month, Russian border guards inspected three killer whales during their transport from Russia to China. According to the transport permit, they were officially captured after September 9th, 2014. But in fact, one of them was one of the rescued animals discovered in August 2014 at the fishing grounds in the Gulf of Sakhalin. Transacting in cetaceans is impossible without links to corruption in the Khabarovsk territory and then Moscow. It is unknown how many killer whales were captured and sold to China, but three killer whales, Narnia, Nord, and Malishka, 
are currently being held at the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow. They are not on public display yet, as the Dolphinarium is still under construction. The true ownership of the Moscow Orcas is uncertain. According to one source, the owner is Sachinsky Delfinari, which ordered the capture of these killer whales. But according to another source, the orcas are owned by the owners of the Oceanarium at the All-Russian Exhibition Center, Sakharov Ilyev and Godnisanov. We appeal to all who may be affected, and we appeal to President Putin. Do some research yourself, Mr. Putin and learn about it. Don't just call yourself an animal lover and look at it and, and look at this beautiful animal and say, I love it. Well, if you love it, let it free. If I could get Mr. Putin's ear for a few moments, I would ask him to not follow the example of America when it comes to dolphins and whales. Uh, we're going in the way of slavery. We're going backwards. They have an opportunity to stop the captures of beluga whales uh, dolphins, other dolphins in Russia for public amusement. Mr. Putin, the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Those are the words of Mahatma Gandhi. What is happening in Russia with killer whales, dolphins and beluga whales has shocked hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world, and is incredibly harmful to the image of your country. Well, Mr. Putin, uh, if you call yourself an animal lover, then you would never support this type of cruelty. And look at the devastation that this is doing, the innocent slaughtering of these animals. And look within yourself and say, is this really what you want to do? Do you want to stand on the side of greatness in history, or do you want to go down as knowing as promoting slaughter and captivity of animals. This is a civilization, a marine civilization. The oceans and seas are their home. What moral right do humans have to ruthlessly pull these highly intelligent creatures from their habitat? Doom to death those who are entangled in fishing nets or unable to live in captivity. Survivors become prisoners, forced to entertain an audience. They are not born to serve people. They have their own life and their own purpose on this planet. They do not deserve violence. The people who are involved in the capture and enslavement of these animals may not answer to authorities, but that doesn't mean these deeds will go unpunished. Many former trainers former hunters and former audiences have become active defenders of these animals and of nature because they have awakened to a new awareness. Now it's your turn.